now that I finished my CAD model, it's time to go to work picking out the materials. I'm going to start with the wood because it's one of the prominent features of my design, but being that I've never worked with wood before, I don't even know where to start. I do like working with new materials for the first time. It's exciting, it's fun, but it's also frustrating. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that we can find something that I like. So unlike the wood, picking out the aluminum was extremely easy because I already have a ton of 6061T aluminum all throughout my house and my shop. I use this material for many of my projects, including my Jeep, because of how strong it is. So this is um, basically aircraft grade aluminum. It is extremely strong. It's pretty firm. Usually when you're like bending and folding, you want to use something softer, like 5052. But we're not really bending a lot of it. Um, just that one PSU bracket, and that's going to be a challenge. I don't have that figured out quite yet. It's going to look pretty good when it's done. As for the wood, I decided to start looking at some of the national store chains to see what they might have. After spending half a day looking around, it became apparent that I wasn't going to find anything exotic or unique, which is what I really want for this project. I decided to get smart and call some experts up, aka furniture shop owners. And eventually I found a furniture shop that might carry some of the exotic woods I'm looking for. So I'm off to the Dado Family Clan Furniture Store to see what they might have. When I got there, I have to admit I was not prepared. I didn't even have a tape measure, and I hadn't anticipated what I actually need to know to pick out wood. Apparently it's extremely different from species to species, and my confusion must have been apparent wandering around in a hundred plus degree warehouse looking through stacks of wood, because several patrons actually stopped and offered some friendly advice and words of wisdom. It's the first cut, if you get something that the, the uh, Green patterns about like this all the way through. That would look better. Look at that. Uh, it has a great color to it, but I just do not like that straight grain. If you want your cigars to smell like anything, it's that. Also, manure. Healthy mix of Spanish cedar and manure. Purple and silver, don't purple wood and silver. Would look amazing. I eventually settled on something that I thought was striking. It's called Purple Heart, and I picked it out because it's actually purple. It's purple. I have never seen a purple wood before, and I mean, it is really, really purple. Not only that, it comes in planks wide enough to where I could actually cut the side panel out of a single piece without having to glue it together. The staff was extremely helpful. They cut my plank down for me and they even planed it. And I was totally happy with the wood looking it up on Wikipedia and reading all about it on the way home. One of the things they mentioned was that it was an extremely hard wood, and I didn't really know how difficult it would be to work with until I got started. But on the ride home, I was happy that after several hours, I finally found something that would look perfect for my build. So after I had picked out my materials, it was time to turn them into parts. Usually I'd use a table saw, a router, and a file, but because of my deadline, I didn't have time for that. I set aside a day to go find someone to help me out. I went to various machine shops, a welder shop, and even a shipyard, and eventually I found a place called Accurate Edge in Gulfport. Accurate Edge does water jet cutting, which is the process of using extremely high pressurized water with an abrasive to cut parts that are extremely thick. I actually don't know what a water jet can't cut out, as they were cutting through 6 inch plate steel when I got there. 
not everybody who will be watching this has access to all the tools I do in my shop. And to just make a completely level playing ground with people that are thinking about doing this project themselves, I wanted to give them access to something that everybody has, and that's partners. <laughs> You're going to be able to find a CNC mill, a water jet, a laser, somewhere that you can ship your parts to to have cut. So that's what I decided to do. Accurate Edge turned out to be a slam dunk for me. We got there early in the morning and the guys were just super friendly. They let me film, which is of course important to this project, but they also went the extra mile cutting the parts out. First we start with some demo pieces to make sure that the water jet wasn't going to damage them. Once I was satisfied with the cuts, they hand them off. Putting the extra effort to find a local relationship was perfect. I love Accurate Edge, I love the guys there, I'm definitely going to be coming back. And it's really awesome when local businesses, you know, pull together and they help each other out like they did today. So I'm really grateful for that experience. So far, I've really stepped outside my comfort zone for this Sapphire build. Not only am I working with challenging materials, but I did a bunch of footwork trying to find people to help me. With how powerful technology and logistics are, it's easy to do the majority of a project stuck behind a screen. I know that when I look at the finished mod, I'm going to see the adventures I had getting to where it is and the people behind it. I'm proud that technology took a backseat to relationships. Relationships that helped keep my project on time and done right. The next stage of this project is to get my pieces powder coated. And keeping in the spirit of doing things local, I know just where to get this done. 